here. I'm a product manager at Maxon uh, working on capsules and scene notes. And in this video, I want to talk about how you can use scene notes to create a procedural game asset. In this case, a, uh, a sort of a cartoon stylized ladder uh, that you know you can adjust the width, you can adjust the height, you can adjust the spacing between your rungs, you can adjust the radius of your rails, the uh, relative radius of your rungs to those rails, and you can even adjust the angle of your ladder as it sort of leans uh, so that you've got a nice clean axis located at the bottom back here so you could easily place this inside of a game environment. So uh, let's go ahead and build this, but before we do, I wanna dive in and show you a little bit about what's going on so you've got a sense of roughly where we're going. So I'm gonna switch over to my nodes layout, I'm moving my console over here so I can see a little bit more easily. And as I move in here, we see we've got a few different sections. I've got one for my uh, rail path, my rung path, my rail profile, my rung profile. I've got my rails, and you see I've got a couple of sweep objects here. And so I'm effectively building up a basic shape using splines. So I'm building my rails, and I am building my rungs, and then I am sweeping a couple of circles along those in order to create my rails and my rungs. I combine those both. Uh, and then I'm transforming by sort of rotating this and using a geometry axis node to line it up so it just sort of sits uh, nice and neatly there uh, on the ground against that wall. So in order to uh, kind of build this, I'm making use of something called the line uh, spline which is a, uh, a scene node that was uh, just released in 2025.1 as a capsule. Uh, the trim spline modifier to sort of cut down the ends here, resample spline to add additional points, and then the clone onto points node to take um, you know, one spline, which is sort of a template like this, uh, this horizontal rung spline, and I'm cloning that onto the points of my, uh, my height spline here. So let's go ahead and build this. Uh, we might not build the exact same thing, but we'll build something pretty similar. And uh, that's because every single time I build something, I, I think about how I might want to build it better the next time. And uh, I want you to feel sort of encouraged to play around and explore with these tools. Um, once you get a, a handle on a few of the basic uh, things that you can, you can use, it becomes much easier to explore new concepts and new ideas. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into my new scene. I'm going to switch to the nodes layout and I'm gonna hide my console again so I've got a little bit more room to work. And I'm gonna hit Shift C on my keyboard to search for nodes. And uh, one of the top entries here is something called nodes mesh. And I'm choosing nodes mesh instead of node spline because the final result, the thing I'm trying to create, is going to be a polygon object in the end. I'm gonna call this my ladder generator, let's say. And with my ladder generator now, let's start blocking out a template. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna add is a line spline. So I'm gonna uh, shift C inside of here and type in L-I-N-E for line. And one of my first entries is gonna look like this, the sort of uh, diagonal line, says line. Again, this is a capsule very recently released. If you do not have 2025.1 yet, you'll need to upgrade in order to see this. So uh, the first line comes in and uh, we don't see it yet because it is not being output from the graph. So we need to connect this wire to the outside here in order to see it. And if you want to see that more easily or do that more easily, select a node that's got a geometry output and tap the Q key on your keyboard to connect that out. Just be careful. You don't do that here in the objects manager because the Q key will disable your entire group. So here we've got our horizontal line. Let's call this width. And we've got this length parameter here that I know I'm gonna to want to expose as a user control. So I'm going to control or command click on this dot to expose it. And then I'm going to drag out a line from here and release and choose add new input. And now as I click on my ladder generator, I've got this length control and I can rename this width. Next up, I'm going to add another spline. This is going to be a line spline or a line, uh, which you can get a shift C, we'll bring it up, line, great. And uh, I'm gonna output this by tapping Q. And this one, I want to point up in the Y direction. And I'm gonna make it a bit longer, let's say 250 uh, units tall, something like that. I'm going to expose the uh, length parameter by pressing control and clicking. And I'm going to drag this out and name it height. So now I've got width and I've got height. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is create 
two rungs by cloning my height line onto my width line. So I'm going to double click here and search for uh, clone onto points. And with clone onto points, I'm going to um, take my height here. This is, we might also, I'm hitting command forward slash to adjust the comet here. We might also call this rail spline. I'm going to drag this onto geometry because this is what we're going to be clothing. We're going to close this onto the width and then I'm going to output this. So now I've got two vertical splines that are width wide and height long. And that's the start of my ladder. Now, um, now that I've got this sort of vertical line, um, I might start thinking about how I want to present my rungs. Now, I could go to my height spline here and increase my point count. And uh, after doing that, I would get a series of points along my, let me get my doodle tool here, and get a point here, maybe a point like that, points along here. And we could use these as a cloning source for our rungs. The problem here is I don't want rungs right here at the top or in the bottom. So what I need to do is somehow take my initial spline and sort of shave off the top, shave off the bottom, and then add additional points here. So to shave off the top and the bottom, there's something called the trim modifier. And then to uh, get these points along the center, there's the resample. And we'll just search for those soon. And resample is going to allow us to create those additional points. So I'm going to take my height here, and let's just output that directly. So we're just looking at this one spline. I'm going to add a trim spline modifier and drag it on here. And the trim spline modifier allows me to drag up, drag down, and it might be a little bit hard to make out in this video, but trust me that it is changing. Um, and I just want to adjust it so that it is a set number of units from the start and the end. So right now I am in percentage mode. If I change to length mode, I can adjust how many units from the start or from the end this is. And from start and from end, let's say, I don't know, uh, 30 centimeters. And I'm gonna use this number, 30 centimeters. This is going to become the spacing for my rungs. So I'm going to expose from start by command clicking, I'm going to drag it out. I'm going to call this rung spacing. I'm going to connect that same input now to uh, from end, not to be confused with start and end, but from end here. And start and end I'm not using, so I'm just going to delete those two. So now I've got my rung spacing that is controlling how far we come in from the edges. And it might not be the easiest to see right now, but as I adjust this, you can see it's, com it's coming in. Now what I want to do is uh, clone my width or my rung spline onto this trimmed spline. So I'm going to do another clone onto points. So Shift C, clone onto points. My points are is this trimmed spline, so that's going to be what I'm cloning onto. And the geometry is this width or rung spline. And then I want to do that and just output it. So now I can see at the start and at the end, we're now getting this rung and adjusting the spacing here, it shows up like so. Now, let's say this is 30. Um, what if I wanna get some intermediate lines in here? Well, for that, we are going to take our trim spline and we are going to resample it, which is to say, um, adjust the number of points along the length of the spline uh, based on some parameters. So I'm now gonna search for resample spline I'm going to drag that onto the wire right here. And right now it's resampling to a count of 100. Well, I don't want a count like that. If I just did a, a fixed count of something like four or five, as I adjust the height here, some of those rungs can get pretty far away. So what I want to do is actually resample, not by a count, but by a step size. My step size right now is five centimeters. I'm going to expose that parameter and I'm going to link it to the rung spacing. So now, as I adjust my height, we see that it's sort of dragging out new rungs. But this is leading to them 
um, being uniformly spaced at the beginning, but that very last rung can get very close to the, the last one. And I don't like that. I want them to be sort of very evenly spaced. So I can take my resample spline and I'm gonna turn on uniform. And now uh, it will add a new rung, sort of clicking it into place um, as needed. So now I've got my rungs and I can sort of uh, select these right here. I'm gonna group them. So Command G will add a scaffold. I'm gonna call these rungs. I'm gonna take this right here, Command G. Let's call this rails. And I now want to give these some, some shape, some solidity. And for that, I'm gonna take my spline and I'm going to sweep it. And this functions just like you would a sweep in um, you know, uh, the objects manager. I'm gonna come in here and search for sweep. And you see that it's called sweep line, not sweep spline. So with sweep line, uh, we need to take our spline and tessellate it, turn it into a series of, rather than sort of like procedural curves, turn it into a series of straight line segments. Now, lucky for us, that's automatically going to happen when we take our, for example, our uh, rail spline here and drag it in to the path section into geometry. And you see that it will automatically create this tessellate spline. And we are still searching for a profile. And the profile is the sort of the shape that is getting swept along this curve. And for that, I'm going to add a circle. And uh, let's take that geometry from the circle, pipe it in here to where it says uh, profile. That will get tessellated as well. And then I will drag out the sweeping. And now we've got two really, really thick circles. Uh, it's 200 centimeters thick, which is gigantic. So let's say something like five centimeters or four centimeters. So now we've got a couple of rails. And what we might choose to do is create another sweep spline like this. So I'm going to do another sweep. And for my path, I'm going to do this for my, my rungs. And I need a profile as well. Now, I could create an entirely new circle, or I could just scale this circle down. And I think I'll scale this circle down. So I'm going to go ahead and choose um, Transform Geometry. Take my geometry here. And for scale, uh, Transform.S, I'm going to set that to maybe half. And I'm now going to plug this in to my profile in geometry, and I'm gonna wire this out. So now I've got my rungs, which are smaller than my rails, and I just wanna connect both of these into a single geometry so I can see that final result. So I'm gonna add a connect, plug that in for my rails, plug that in for my rungs, and now I've got a ladder generator whose width I can adjust, whose height I can adjust, and the rung spacing I can adjust as well. And if I would like, I could come in here, for example, and start uh, exposing some more parameters. So for the circle, for example, I can command click on this dot and drag this out, and I'm gonna call this rail radius. And um, we see that we are transforming this here. So transform geometry, on scale, that's what we're really changing. So I'm gonna to choose to add an IO dash float. And one of these is strength, which gives me a zero to 100% uh, slider that I can plug in to scale. So now I can adjust my strength here, and that's going to adjust the relative size of my rung. So rung scale, let's call it, or rung ratio, let's say. So now I've got the ability to adjust my width, my height, my rung spacing, my rung ratio, and my rail radius. So I've got a lot I can play with. I can come into my sweep here, and I could, for example, uh, go to my caps section, and choose, I'm gonna select both of these actually, and I'm going to round out my caps a little bit, add some, subdivisions, two or three or four, something like that. And I'm I'm actually realizing that my rungs don't even need caps. So I'm just gonna turn off start and end caps there. 
So now I've got my rungs, I've got my rails, I've got the ability to adjust my width. Um, let's go ahead and allow for this to get angled against a wall. And so for that, I'm gonna take this final resulting ladder and I'm going to use another transform geometry node. This is going to let me rotate this. So I'm gonna rotate it on X like so. And I'm pretty sure I'm always gonna want it to, well, maybe we don't know which of these directions we're going to want. So I'm gonna come in here to transform. I'm gonna come into rotation and I'm gonna grab this X, I'm gonna drag it out, I'm gonna call this, um, uh, lean, but uh, I don't like the way that this is looking. So I'm going to delete this and add an IO angle input. So IO angle allows me to adjust an angle. I can wire this up here to X. And so as I adjust the angle, it does like this. And now that it's done this, I'm going to add a geo axis. Geometry axis is going to rest this on the floor and center it. And what I want to do is actually adjust it so that alignment on Z is towards the back here. So as I adjust this angle, it's sort of leaning like so. And if I want, I can do a little bit more to, to, to make this just a little bit prettier. So for my rails, for example, um, I can adjust my uh, end scale down so they just sort of taper just a little bit. Um, you could go in there and add some noise to your, your splines to sort of deform them a little bit. Um, but I'd say that this is a pretty good uh, procedural ladder generator. I'm just going to come into my materials and quickly add a wood, apply that to my ladder. And there you go. This is how you would create a uh, procedural ladder using scene nodes and uh, encapsulate it with these, these nice settings that you can adjust in order to completely change this shape um, and even allowing you to rotate it and have the axis line up as you would want uh, based upon that. And again, this is not the most useful thing if you're only gonna make one ladder, but you can easily duplicate this, increase the height and have sort of a, a family resemblance between multiple ladders You could select all of these and adjust their rung spacing. So they have a uniform rung spacing. We could say, oh, actually we want it to be about 50. I want them to be about uh, 50 wide. And you know, this just gives you a lot more to play with. So there you go. That is how you might procedurally generate a ladder using Cinema 4D scene nodes. Uh, again, we are using a couple of line splines, a resample, a trim spline modifier, clone onto points, and some transformations and sweeping to create this final shape. And if you wanted to go in and clean up this UI in the resource editor. Um, I hope that this is uh, a fun starting project. Uh, play around, I'd be really curious to see uh, what you create if you create anything along these lines. Uh, feel free to share in the comments. Thanks so much, bye-bye.